Hey guys, just wanted to wish all of you dads out there a happy Father's Day and come to you with a real quick video. This is just going to be one clip of about 30 minutes of uh, the pool training event we had last weekend. But um, obviously we've had a whirlwind of a month. Um, we started doing on-site consultations um, in addition to our training that we do um, in Missouri four times to five times per year. We now are going to go once a month out to um, fairly you know, elaborate job sites, maybe job sites where they're having a hard time getting a crew to us <clears throat> for training. And uh, we're going to go do uh, some really cool uh, site consults where we either go to a pool or a school or some big ICF project where maybe it's their first experience with ICF. And we're going to bend over backwards to make sure that they succeed. But this uh, training, one thing I wanted to do was um, cause a blowout. In my last training, one of my friends that was helping with the training, Austin, he started asking people, you know, what do you expect out of training? Because it's kind of hard for me to do that while everybody's there and learning. And it was funny because a lot of people said, man, we'd like to see Aaron mess up. We'd like to see how he handles adversity, which obviously at training, I've gone out of my way to bend over backwards to keep that from happening. Um, I, wanna, I want you guys to see success, but I, that, that, got, that got me thinking. And so at this training, in addition to the pool, you can see me whacking on the wall here with a piece of pipe. I booby trapped this block. I cut the webs. I scored it from the inside. I did everything I could to make this thing blow out with ease. Um, for one thing, guys, these blocks are supposedly defective. They were made during COVID and uh, another contractor had had trouble with this lot of blocks. Um, Fox Blocks replaced them saying that, you know, it was made. So you can see I finally caused it to happen by hitting it with a hammer, um, which is ridiculous. Um, honestly, it's a testament, in my opinion, to Fox Blocks or ICF in general, that it is that difficult to cause a blowout. Um, like I said, guys, I cut the web before the blowout before we filled it. I also took a uh, ICF saw and scored halfway through the block from the back side. Probably should have done it from the front side, but I didn't want my trainees to know that I had done it. I was trying to have it be a surprise. Um, and I damaged that block significantly pre pour. And I was also showing them a mono pour, and I kind of, my hubris got the better of me. And I actually blew out the, uh, blew out the, um, fast foot form, which I don't even want to show that part of the video because I feel like I wouldn't be fair to fast foot and fab form because I was abusing that form in a way that I would never recommend or train anyone to do, but I was trying to make the wall blow out. And, uh, that's why that LVL is pinned in front of the, the LVL is pinned in front of the footing. Cause I blew the footing out before this clip started. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of a, kind of a funny little deal. It just gave way. I hadn't really screwed it on there the way I normally would on a job. I just thought that the way I had booby trapped this wall, it would go immediately. To my surprise, um, obviously I had to beat it with a pipe and a hammer to get it to actually blow out, which kind of ruined the surprise. I was still able to train on how you fix a blowout. Um, and that's what I'll get into right now. So when you have something like this happen on an ICF pour, the only time I've had it happen in the field was uh, back when I was using a lot of new Dura. Their corners um, have two inherent flaws, in my opinion. One is that you have to insert a web. If one of your guys, you know, one of your, you know, just labor workers doesn't really understand or doesn't have the attention to detail, and he doesn't snap that thing in properly, you're going to be guaranteed almost to have a blowout on the corner. The other thing is the way that those um, blocks are bundled, you need to, um, you need to be very careful carrying them. They're supposed to be only transported and carried on the job site vertically. Uh, one of these days when I have a bundle of Nudura corners, I'll show you what I mean. But you can damage them inside of their packaging by carrying them sideways, sitting on them, tra just trans in transport. They can. It's one of my big things about Nudura. They're a great block, but their corners are one of their weak links. They want them foldable, but it builds in some... Uh, inherent flaws. That said, that's the only blowouts I've ever had on site. But what you do is you find the piece of foam that blew out. Like you can see, I just did. It had a couple hammer holes in it because I had to do what I had to do to get it to blow. You take a piece of plywood, can be OSB, whatever, and you screw it over the hole. You basically put that styrofoam back in the hole, you know, before you uh, go back. And I'm standing right in the way because, you know, content and all. 
Uh, but anyway, they're screwing that piece of plywood over the hole and we go right back to pouring. The difference in that, and if you guys are, you know, have done wall work with plywood forms or metal forms, they're very robust forms, but if you have a blowout, your day is over. It's cost you thousands of dollars. It's a bad, bad, bad day. With uh, with ICF, the worst of it, the absolute, you know, worst bit of it is you lose, you know, a, a, a few wheelbarrows worth of concrete. You can see what's under Jack's legs right there is, you know, what poured out. It could be a little more than that if it was a big pour and you got it blew out higher up. But I've never seen a blowout cost us more than a yard. And you might have to clean that up depending on where that lands. If it's going to be in the way of your French drain or something, you might get in there and have to burn some calories getting it out of the way. But uh, that's, you know, that's the worst of the effort that you're going to have to put out. And as soon as you get that plywood screwed on, you're back to work. You're, you're, you're going at it again. And I, I always tell everyone, this is the second worst thing that can happen to you on an ICF pour. The worst thing is obviously you do the bracing poorly and you tip a wall over. But that is... Um, Inherently unlikely if you just follow uh, the bracing instructions with whatever bracing system you're using, whether that's plumb wall or horizontal bracing like the um, fab form system, the zonts and the zuckles. It's I've never seen it. I've I've rarely heard of it being an issue. I've heard of walls tilting a little bit and not being plumb. The consult that I'm doing in Grand Junction, Colorado, has some of that going on where the walls are not perfectly true. They were in no danger of tipping over. It would take a lot of mistakes. Um, and, very egregious mistakes to ever make that an issue. So the worst of it is right here. It's a blowout and you're done. I'm starting to tell, tell the guys about uh, plumbing and stuff, but just really wanted to cover the blowout today because I think that some people come to my training literally because they're afraid of what could go wrong. And the biggest could go wrong is a blowout um, in most people's world. And ICF blowouts are the least consequential blowouts in the ICF wall world, or I mean, in the concrete wall world. Um, obviously, the other types of forming blowouts are much, much more catastrophic when they occur. So I just wanted to show you guys this. Like I said, in the coming weeks, I'm going to get into a lot more detail about our consultation service. Uh, we have another training coming up in August. I have not set the dates because I have a big thing to do with EcoFinish at their home office and I'm making sure that I don't uh, conflict the dates, but I will be announcing training dates in August uh, within the next week and a half probably. I'm going to be back in Grand Junction. I'm going to go visit my Angel Fire project while I'm out there. So I've got, I've got just a dozen videos probably pre-shot right now that I need to spend some time and edit but got, kind of wanted to show you what we were adding to training this time. I think next time I'm going to pour my blowout wall on a on a footing. So I'm not having to put the pressure on the fast foot because that was kind of unfair to the system. And I'm just going to hammer down and I'm going to make sure it blows out like it should instead of me having to beat on it with a hammer. But anyway, guys, uh, go enjoy your Father's Day. I really appreciate appreciate all of you. We hit 15,000 subscribers yesterday, so that's a big milestone for us. Um, just 85,000 more to go to the silver button. So uh, stay tuned, tell your friends uh, to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.